Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we are actually going to do a top 10. There is a reason for this and uh, to be fair, I try to listen to my audience and the people who watch the channel as much as I can to a certain extent. Obviously, I'm not going to let the uh, the audience dictate what I want to talk about if I don't want to go down that road, but uh, there was some feedback given on some of my This Is Not A Top 10 uh, videos saying that uh, I go into such depth on some of these fragrances where if I, I'm talking about a particular note, sometimes it ends up being where uh, some of the video where we talk about fragrances that do have that particular note, but it's not like they're really a rose or frankincense or, you know, in this case, we're going to be talking about vetiver. And so I thought, you know what, to cut this off at the pass, what I'm going to do is I am going to do a top 10 fragrance countdown ranked where the the name vetiver is actually in the perfume so this is going to be a top 10 uh vetiver fragrances where the name vetiver is actually in the title of the fragrance and then coming this weekend i'm going to do a this is not a top 10 focused on the note of vetiver where we'll, we'll include all kind of stuff we'll include include frederick mall's lipstick rose which has a vetiver note we'll include you know pharrell williams girl which uh has a Fahrenheit vibe, but does have a vetiver note in the base. So that'll be sort of the, um, you know, entire, I'm not going to say entire universe of vetiver fragrances in my collection, because vetiver is a ubiquitous note. You find it in many different fragrances, but um, it's going to be more of a broader scope video where we're including fragrances that have the note of vetiver in them. And this is going to be basically vetiver fragrances that are really tied and geared towards vetiver. When you put vetiver on the tin, it better be a vetiver fragrance, right? So, uh, it's going to be 10 fragrances with two, honor two honorable mentions. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about what vetiver is. So basically, vetiver is just grass. It's a, it's a tall grass, basically, that uh, is indigenous to India. And I believe now it grows in places like Haiti, um, in, in China, um, Indonesia, all of these different uh, places now grow vetiver, Java, Java vetiver. Um, so uh, it has been cultivated in other parts of the world now. And I think Haiti is a major uh, exporter of vetiver, but originally it is a Indian product. And actually vetiver is an Indian word. So, um, and if you, and if you really want to get a feel for true vetiver, try to get yourself a bottle of this. This is Ruchas, and uh, Ruchas will give you an idea just how deep and complex uh, of a fragrance note it is. There are certain notes in, in perfumery that I've said that you can just wear it on its own. Oh. You know, there are certain notes in perfumery that really feel like you can just wear them on their own. They don't need a fragrance built around it. Labdanum is one such note. I absolutely love labdanum for how complex it is with that resinous, leathery quality. Uh, I've talked about a few of those type of notes to me. Oud is one such note. Oud is such a complex, multifaceted note. As is, as I'm throwing stuff, as is vetiver. And um, so vetiver... There are many different factors of vetiver, and if you've ever seen the grass grow, um, you know, you'll think that, oh, they probably are harvesting this grass and, you know, using it to make the vetiver. Not true. They actually uh, do not use the top of the grass at all. It's the roots where the oil actually comes from. That's what is so special about the vetiver, is the roots themselves that grow under the ground. And some vetiver oils, depending on some vetiver um you know, grasses, depending on where they grow, can come across as smelling very fresh and green, almost just like you did cut the grass down and you're smelling it. But there are others where they come across as smelling very smoky. If vetiver is grown in like a volcanic region of the world, it can come across as having this ashy, smoky, incense -y quality to it. Um, some of my favorite vetiver and the finest vetiver in the world has a very earthy quality to it to me. This, um, you know, petrichor earthiness, if you will. Uh, it can come across as smelling very uh, pungent, putrid. Uh, putrid's a bad word because it makes it sound like it's bad, but it's, uh, or it makes it sound like it smells bad. Um, but it does have a very mature smell to it. So to me, 
And, you know, when you think about vetiver, when I think about, let's say, some of the real vintage masculine fragrances, uh, there was Guerlain vetiver, there was Carvin vetiver, there was um, Givenchy's vetiver, which, by the way, I've never smelled Carvin vetiver, I've never smelled Givenchy's vetiver. I know Givenchy, uh, that was uh, Mr. Givenchy's signature scent. He wore the vetiver, from my understanding. That was his scent. And so, because it was such a popular scent for men in the 50s and 60s and 70s even, 70s is where you started to get that patchouli and musk really starting to come out, um, in 60s too even with the patchouli, but, um, you know, it was such a popular note vetiver for men, and it started to get this old school classification about it. Um, it started to have this mature smell, and I think that vetiver is a very masculine note. Historically, it is, but I don't think it's a, I don't think it's something where only men can wear it. I think the, the uh, vetiver fragrances, even some of the highest ranked ones on this list are completely in 100% unisex. Actually, looking at the list, I think every single one of these is unisex. Um, I think that some of the earthier vetivers lend themselves more to a masculine type personality, but I think anyone can pretty much wear uh, any of these vetiver fragrances and they're just completely unisex, although many of them are marketed towards men, if that makes sense. So don't tune out if you're a lady. Um, some ladies absolutely fall in love with vetiver because it smells so different from what the industry gives them. You know, whenever you go to the store or to the perfume counter and you smell the stuff that's marketed towards women, nothing smells like vetiver. Um, and so whenever they smell it for the very first time, many women are sort of taken aback because it's so different to what they've been given by the industry for so long and they fall in love with it. And rightly so. It's a beautiful note. Um, and sometimes it has this very woody, you know, I love the woody aspect of vetiver. It can have this almost hazy, earthy, soily, smoky, um, fresh, and it works as a fixative. So I think, um, I think Jura Rose once told me that one of the most popular ingredients or, or, you know, as a perfumer, one of the most used materials was vetiviral acetate. Um, and so vetiviral acetate is one of the most used ingredients in a fragrance. So if you just pull one fragrance, odds are that uh, if, if you're going to be a betting man, you could bet there's some sort of vetiviral vetiviral acetate in in the fragrance composition um, not always but it's just an interesting little point that uh, he mentioned to me one time so uh, let us get into this video and so we've got a top 10 ranked but we're actually going to do two honorary mentions but before we do that let's do scent of the day because today is actually the very first time I've worn this fragrance and I actually really enjoyed it do I love it? No, I don't love it, but I really enjoy it. And I think it's overpriced. You know, I see these go for two, two fifty on eBay. It's not worth that. If you get it for what I got it for, hundred bucks or so, I think it's worth it. Um, but uh, it is an Ashmal, and Ashmal is a house I'm really starting to come around to. And this is from sort of their, I guess you could call it their um, high end line. Okay, so they have like a niche line. And, and this is, to me, almost like Ajmal trying to compete with Amouage. That's what it reminds me of a little bit. And this is called Amir 2. So, first of all, just look at this packaging. For an Ajmal, okay, this is a magnetic box right here. And the front sort of comes off like this, magnetic. Um, and um, there's, your, there's your bottle in this beautiful little tomb. Uh, look at that. And the bottle itself is absolutely stunning. So I wore this to work today, actually. And this is a um, this is a cheesy oud when you first spray. So there's the bottle. Actually, really beautiful packaging. I love the bottle. The uh, only bad part about the bottle is that it's 50 mil. So as beautiful as this bottle is, you can see just how little juice they give you. It looks like it's a huge 100 mil bottle, but then there's only a little bit of juice on the inside. It's 50 mils, uh, which is fine, whatever. For a big collection, there's nothing wrong with that. And I and I wore it to work today. And the opening has this very cheesy oriental oud smell about it with some spices. So you get pepper and nutmeg and rose and geranium and ginger. Um, but sort of the cheesy aspect of the oud comes out. I don't know what type of oud they used here, 
they did cut it a little bit with some cashmere and some cashmere wood so it feels like a niche you know it feels like something you would uh expect to smell in a in an amouage or a roja or you know something like that they've mixed it with cypriol which again adds even further to this higher end niche feeling if roja put this in a 500 dollars bottle and called it oud extraordinaire or something people would flock to it they'd pay five thousand five hundred a thousand dollars just because he just because he priced it at that ajmal has them i think a uh, couple hundred bucks or 250 retail and i still think you're getting a deal but it's a better deal if you can get it discounted somehow um if you have a friend or someone that's selling a bottle hari sold me this at a very fair price so shout out to him um and and i'm and i'm enjoying it is it my favorite oud fragrance no but is it good Yes, and the oud smells very natural. There's also some balsams in the base. Uh, it smells like, they say there's ambergris in here. I don't know if it's real or not. Uh, some patchouli, guarjum balsam, musk, and frankincense. That's why I say it smells like a high-end rojo or something like that. It's really, really good. Um, and so, so yes, here's one that doesn't get much talk, but I guess you'll hear more about on the channel. The more I get to know it, uh, eventually I will do a full review. And... There's actually something written on the inside. I've never read this. Imagine the essence of regality. Ah. Presenting the Amir collection from Ajmal. Imagine a collection of fragrances that are infused with the scent of regality. All right, you already said that. Imagine a collection of perfumes that are a tribute to sheer sophistication. With the new Amir collection from Ajmal Perfumes, imagination is now a fragrant reality. And why not? After all, the Amir collection has oriental essences which have been carefully crafted by our master perfumer. I wonder who that is, by the way. They should disclose who their master perfumer is. Each ingredient is rich and premium. Each has been personally hand-picked, okay? Each is a testament to oriental royalty. As Ajmal Perfumes welcomes its 70th platinum year in 2021, the Amir Collection is an ode to our seven decades of expertise in the art of oriental perfumery, a timeless homage. So imagine Amir as your new signature, one that is exotic, redolent, and bespoke, crafted especially for connoisseurs, crafted specially for you, Amir from Ajmal Perfumes. Just imagine. Okay, so they obviously need to work on their copy a little bit, um, but uh, the, the write-up doesn't really do the fragrance credit, because that was sort of a corny, cheesy write-up, but cheesy write-up for a cheesy oud? Huh? Huh? Okay, enough of that. Um, let's move on to the vetiver. So, uh, the, the two that missed out on the top 10, and I'll do full reviews on these or early impressions because I have some uh, decants thanks to friends, but number 12 is a house that I've actually never talked about on the channel because I own no bottles from, from this house, although uh, they have a fragrance I really like called Eau de Beau. I would love... Um, an older bottle of Eau de Beau, but uh, this is a fragrance that is discontinued very sadly because this is a really good vetiver and it's L'Occitane's Eau de Vetiver. They just put vetiver, but it's actually called Eau de Vetiver, just like Eau de Beau. Um, and Eau de Vetiver is sort of a woody, spicy take on a vetiver and it's probably the most designer smelling vetiver to me on this list. Um, so as you can see, I have more than enough juice to wear it, review it, get to know it, and, and do a video for you guys. This is bergamot and lemon in the top, <coughs> excuse me, with uh, nutmeg and gaiac wood in the heart, with cedarwood, vetiver, and leather in the base. And um, that spicy, maybe it's the gaiac wood, I'm not sure what it is with, um, with eau de beau. I think eau de beau... Um, also has some spices in there, maybe some cardamom or pink pepper or something like that. But, you know, maybe it's the cardamom nutmeg thing. I don't know what it is, but there's something that reminds me of Eau de Beau a little bit. Maybe it's the woods, probably the woods, because there is also cedar wood and, and vetiver in, um, in Eau de Vetiver. And uh, I think there might be some woody notes in Eau de Beau. I'm just not sure what they are because I don't own a bottle. Um... But uh, Eau de Vetiver has a vetiver and a leather in the base. And I actually have it right here. I sprayed some before the videos. Um, yeah, it's a very, um, 
you know, this sort of fresh take on vetiver, barbershop freshness, but also this designer woodiness, like very easy to wear. This would be a great fragrance for a man in his 20s, maybe right out of college. Maybe he wants to smell a little more sophisticated than his friends wearing Eros and all that shit that they're wearing, Sauvage. Um, but he still wants to wear something that has a little bit of a designer, modern twist to it, okay? And Eau de Vetiver does that. Now, this came out in 2001, so don't think this is a brand new fragrance or anything. When I say modern, I mean slightly modern. Um, modern compared to the vintages that I love. This is not like a new release or anything, and it's discontinued, which makes me sad. Um, this is good, though. I mean, this is probably full bottle worthy good, but... Once your collection starts getting as big as mine, you have to sort of be a little bit more, um, you have to be a little more selective. You can't just buy everything, uh, which it felt like I did for a while there. So you have to really be a little selective on what you buy and what you allow into the collection. And I think I'm going to start like reviewing some fragrances that I want out of the collection, like Cigar Rum by um, Strangers, Prince Designer House. I'm going to review that and sell it, I think. I'm going to start doing that to try to get some more money in so I can buy other fragrances that I really want with the money instead of just holding on to stuff that I'm like, eh, about. Uh, but that's Eau de Vetiver by L'Occitane at number 12. Well, I'll just say honor honorary mention number one. Honorary mention number two is this. This is Hiram Green, which is a house that I have not talked about on the channel yet, but I've been threatening to do a live stream and where we smell a bunch of their fragrances and talk about them in a live stream setting forever. And this is called Vetiver. Go figure. This came out uh, two years ago in 2021. And Vetiver is woody and green and fresh and ethereal, according to them. Fresh and ethereal. And it's ginger citrus fruits and java vetiver. Uh, with Haitian vetiver, so there's two types of vetiver in here, with ambrette seed and cedar wood. And I will tell you what, uh, I've got it right here, Hiram Green's vetiver. Um, this is actually a really, really good scent. Fantastic vetiver fragrance. And you know what it reminded me of? Like early on when you first spray, it reminded me of a Bortnikoff. If you watch my review on Lea Exquise by Bortnikoff, there's just something about this. Maybe it's the ambrette. Maybe it's just this natural style. Because Hiram Green does also have a natural style to their creation. Um, handcrafted and entirely natural. So they're a house that is... Uh, they hang their hat on doing natural perfumery. Which is very, very hard to do. Very hard to do natural perfumery well. Um, and so... This is good though. I mean, it's a good vetiver. It just missed out on the top 10. Honestly, I only had so many vetivers that had the name of vetiver in them. And that's why the first three we're going to do are um, little samples, decants. But I'll, I'll do videos on these if you guys are interested. Um, but I'm thinking about doing a Hiram Green, uh, you know, live stream. So that'll be fun. So Hiram Green's vetiver at number 11. Really good. Really good stuff, and they hand write each batch code in, in here. It's a very interesting little house, I'll tell you that. Um, a house that I want to get to know more of. So let me put this away so I can find it when it comes time to do that live stream video. Uh, okay, so now we're on to the top 10. So number 10. Uh, number 10 is a house I just did a video on about a week ago, and it's the house of Ariza L. Legrand. And I did a video recently on a fragrance called Sheepra Mousse, uh, which I highly recommend. That is a great Sheepra for somebody who wants to step out of, let's say, the designer rat race. If they want to get something that's a little higher quality with a nod to the past and classy, Sheepra Mousse blew me away. I loved it. Full bottle worthy. Will I buy a full bottle? Again, it goes back to the whole, I've got a big ass collection to wear. Um, but is it full bottle worthy? Yes, I think it is. And, and this is... Vetiver Royal Bourbon. So one of my fragrance godparents sent me this. And um, Vetiver Royal Bourbon, I've got it right here. Oh my god, man. This is a house I need to spend more time with. This is absolutely glorious. It opens up 
uh, slightly pepperminty and a little bit spicy, but the peppermint is very prominent. And when I first sprayed, I was like, ooh, this is maybe a little bit of a miss from the house. This came out nine years ago, by the way, 2014. But what happens is there's vetiver absolute in the top. There's bourbon vetiver in the heart, which is like the most sought after type of vetiver. And there's labdanum and iris and sandalwood in the heart. And so instantly, not instantly, but once that peppermint starts to dry, you know, a couple minutes in, two, four, five, 10 minutes in, you'll notice that spicy peppermint start to recede. And even now I can still sort of smell it, but really what's stealing the show right now is vetiver with that labdanum, which I love that resinous style labdanum and iris. And the iris in here is just a stunner. It's a stunner of an iris. It's beautiful. I love what iris does. It adds this 3D dimension to a fragrance and it makes it slightly powdery it's sort of, uh, remember I said vetiver by itself can be slightly hazy. Iris sort of just smooths everything out. The, the, the vetiver that's hazy that I'm talking about almost has this granular, sandy, earthy quality to it. The iris just sort of blends it all out. It just sort of makes those big, earthy, um, you know, just soily, clumps together it just flattens them out and makes the sand smooth if that makes sense and the base is styrax immortel canary islands juniper tobacco leather and oak moss what a fragrance this is um i need to i need to do a video on this this is a this is a fantastic house i need to um i need to explore more from the house of ariza el legrand very impressed with what i've smelled so far and very impressed with the fact that in the last like seven or eight years, they've only raised their prices like 30 bucks or something. They haven't jacked the prices up like everyone else has in the community. I think you can get 100 mil for like 150 bucks retail. Very, very fair. If you can get these for um, under 100 um, discounted or something, great addition. I mean, this is how niche perfumery should be done. Very impressed with Ariza El Legrand. Beautiful house. I need to, um, I need to explore more. Okay. So that is number 10. Number nine. Number nine is probably the most expensive vetiver. It is the most expensive vetiver on this list retail, but it's not my favorite. And, um, I, I, I do think it's good. I'm not knocking it. I just think that uh, if you twisted my arm and said, Ramsey, you need to sell one Roja fragrance that you have a full bottle of, I don't think I would even think. I think I would just sell this one. Uh, so this is Roja's Vetiver Parfum Pour Homme. And I don't want to knock it because it's not that it's a bad scent. Because it's not. It's actually a really good scent. Um, there's a little bit of uh, Guerlain's Vetiver in here. There's a little bit of Tom Ford's Grey Vetiver in here. Uh, and there's this trick that Roja has used many times with his, uh, if you've watched some of my Roja reviews over the last year, 18 months or so, um, go watch my like Herod's Pour Homme review or Goodman's Pour Homme or those kind of uh, scents that are geared towards those uh, department stores where they're really trying to get someone who has a lot of money who's walking through the store and doesn't care if they drop six, five, six, seven hundred dollars on a bottle of fragrance on an impulse buy, right? Those are the people they're going for. And so what, what he's done with many of these scents, and this is one, is he's used the note of Letsea Kubiba. And Letsea Kubiba is basically this shrub that has these little white flowers on them. But the, the, the shrub, the Letsea Kubiba plant, which I think is native to Asia, if I'm not mistaken, um, extends citrus notes into the dry down. Okay? So basically... It, or it almost tricks you into thinking you're still smelling citrus deeper into the dry down. I don't think it technically can extend citrus, but it's a, it's a plant that smells like you're smelling a citrus note. So those bergamot, lemon, let's say a kubiba bright opening hits you in, in the beginning. And normally, with other houses, of course, because the bergamot and the lemon is more volatile, it'll fly off your skin faster it's going to go away and you're going to be left with sort of the heavier, woodier, 
you know, notes, the galbanum, the resins, the gaiac wood, the labdanum, the oak moss, stuff like that, right? But the Litsea Kabiba note stays into the dry down. And so it feels like you're smelling beautiful citruses hours later. Uh, and that's the trick with this. And unfortunately, that really feels like about the gist of it. It feels like um, this is a Shepra that he created. He loves Shepras. It feels sort of like a labdanum heavy Shepra, which I like. I like it. It just, you know, for what it is, it just feels like, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't do anything special for $500 or whatever this is. 350 pounds or whatever it works out to in dollars. I don't know, 480 or 460 or 450 or um, very expensive stuff. And um, I've smelled the Parfum Cologne. I hate it. Hate the Parfum Cologne of this. Um, and and so if, um, you know, there is an older bottle style as well. He did these vetivers with the, you know, cap that looks like my scandal cap that doesn't have the diamonds on it yet uh, and, or, or the Swarovski crystals, and with a paper label, I don't know if there's differences there, but I can tell you that if you are going to buy this one, and, and I know I haven't made it sound appealing, although it is quite nice, it doesn't last that long either, it's like six hours, and I reapply, you know, five, six hours I reapply, um, he's also added some celery seeds in here, um, So yeah, spicy green, slightly labdanum-y. Uh, it, um, it's good. It's good. It's just not what I would expect. So um, for that kind of money, I just expect more. You know, you ask premium prices, you're going to probably get premium expectation. And this one just never delivered for me. But I do like it. Um, I just think there are better vetiver. So Roja's vetiver at number nine. Number eight. Number eight is a Nishane, and this is actually Sultan Vetiver. Now, this came out a couple years after the Roja, and um, this is a 2014 release. And Sultan Vetiver is sort of the king of people who like, uh, people who like very, let's say, intense Vetiver experiences. I would recommend trying Sultan Vetiver because Sultan Vetiver has like four types of vetiver in here. It's got Java Vetiver, Bourbon Vetiver, Haitian Vetiver, and Brazilian Vetiver. There are four types of vetiver in here. So this just this just shreds the competition. Um oh no, my uh the uh oh hang on. The uh the whatchamacallit, the um, collar actually got stuck in the cap. Um, get out of here. How's that for quality? Ah, there you go. There's the collar. Um, okay, how's that for quality on a video too? Come on, Nishane. Get on there. I guess it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but... <sighs> okay, let's see if it'll stay this time. Ah, uh huh. Okay, so there you have it. Nishane Sultan Vetiver, very intense vetiver experience that I love. I love vetiver like this. I like my vetiver to be sort of challenging. And what throws people off about this is, um, in the base there's a leathery amber wood note, and that amber wood note puts people off. Some people, luckily doesn't do it to me. Um, I can still wear this and enjoy it. Um, and I'll do a full review on this one day. Uh, I don't know if this has ever been reformulated, but there also is an older bottle of this. Uh, it, 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 it looks like a, uh, stock bottle with a, with a, um, doesn't have the Roja plate on the front yet, if you will. Doesn't have the nicer, heavier cap yet. It's like just a standard black cap. I don't know if it's been changed since then, but there is a green absinthe note in the top of this, by the way, too. So the um, the top is very green with the earthy vetiver. There's there's all, I mean, it shows you, the thing I like about this is it really shows you all aspects of vetiver. You know, you get all of the aspects I mentioned earlier, the green, earthy, fresh, uh, woody, smoky, 
you know, Soily, Rudy, all of those aspects are here and more. So, brilliant vetiver fragrance to me, Sultan Vetiver by Nishane. And number eight, and this is the, uh, apparently, card of Sultan Vetiver that is supposed to remind you of Sultan Vetiver by Nishane. Um, looks like maybe a town with a bunch of little houses in there. I'm not sure. Um, maybe the vetiver growing around the outside. But uh, Nishane gives you little postcards with each one of their fragrances with a picture that's supposed to represent the scent. And I guess that is the scent of Sultan Vetiver to them. All right, so that was number eight. Number seven, we are staying with the niche. So we've got back-to-back-to-back -back -back niches at uh, nine, well, actually, ten, nine, eight, and now number seven. And number seven is um, Creed's original vetiver. Now, uh, if you're somebody who says, I like my vetiver to be grassy and fresh, and citrusy. I like the citrusy aspects of vetiver. This is it. This is your fragrance right here. And I think this is a great fragrance. If you've ever smelled Mugler's Cologne, there's a little bit of a resemblance to Mugler's Cologne, but this smells so much classier. Mugler's Cologne smells like something you throw in your gym bag and just spray it all over. And, you know, this is though, it has that creed, creamy, sandalwoody, ambergris thing going on in the base that just makes it seem a little higher class to me. And uh, Original Vetiver has a little bit of a weird story, though, because if you go and um, you go to the Creed um, Boutique, so creedboutique.com is actually Creed's website, and you look for, um, you look for Original Vetiver. So listen to the story, though. It just doesn't make sense to me. True, let's see if they've changed it since I read it and made fun of it earlier. 100 mils is $470, by the way, in, the, in America. So this is an old 75 mil bottle, which they don't make these 75 mils anymore. I won't buy the new 50 or 100 mil Creed. So that's a 2016. I don't know if you can see from the glare, but 2016 bottle right there. 16, um, 16 J01. So Creed's original vetiver dramatically reinvents the traditional vetiver scent. Before original vetiver, only one part of the vetiver plant was used in a fragrance. That's the roots I was telling you about. That's what vetiver is. The House of Creed infuses all three parts of the plant. The earthy root, the verdant leaves, first of all, it's a grass, and the rich heart to freshen the blend. The fuck are they talking about? The result is a green, fresh scent reminiscent of lingering summers. I agree with that part. It is definitely reminiscent of summers. This is a beautiful scent for summer. Perfect for summer. Perfect for Texas weather. And it's perfect for the office. This is an office banger. Uh, invigorating, sophisticated, and vivacious. That's a good word for it. It leaves an alluring air of freshness around any lucky enough to wear it. Okay, so I agree with that last part. But what is this three parts of a vetiver? Are they just, are they taking the piss? Are they? I'm thinking they are. I'm thinking they're screwing with us. Um, like, let's just make some shit up about uh, uh, heart and and leaves. Do they even know vetiver's a grass and not a tree? Anyways, fucking creed, man. Oh, but you can add a leather sleeve to your purchase for $225. Um, that's just somebody with so much money they can just click everything. Add an engra engrave the bottle for 30 bucks. Add a leather sleeve. Yeah, screw it. Just add, add it all. Uh, unbelievable. So, but I do like the scent. So at number seven, we've got Creed's original vetiver. Number six is our first of three Guerlain's on the list. And this is a 2007 release. This is Guerlain Extreme. Vetiver Extreme, excuse me. So Vetiver Extreme is a fragrance that gets almost no talk in the fragrance community. Almost no one mentions this fragrance, and I'm not really sure why. It just sort of gets pushed to the side. You know, it just gets shoved over there. Um, it is still available. Maybe that's why. Once it gets discontinued, people will start talking about how amazing this is. But um, it's green. It's spicy. 
Uh, you have basically, it's a simple note breakdown. It's bergamot, lemon, pepper, nutmeg, vetiver, cedar, and tonka. So if you know Guerlain's vetiver, you instantly notice a couple things. Number one, there's no tobacco in this. Okay, tobacco is a big part of Guerlain's vetiver, the, the OG, the original. Um, so they've removed the tobacco, which changes the scent profile dramatically. Okay, dramatically it changes the scent profile. And, um, but they've kept a lot of what's, what makes vetiver, vetiver, okay? So they kept the tonka bean, they kept the nutmeg, uh, they kept this, uh, pepper note in the mid, and they kept the, um, bergamot and the lemon, but they removed the orange. So there's no orange, there's no, um, in the base, there's no tobacco. And what the fragrance ends up smelling like to me is it ends up smelling, so this is number six on my list, but I really like this. This is a great vetiver that is very uh, overlooked. Everyone overlooks this scent. It's sort of the red-headed stepchild for some reason. Um, and technically this is a different fragrance. It's not just, a, it's a flanker of vetiver, but it's a different fragrance. Um, and, um, so, but what I think Guerlain did is this is 2007. So five years before this, yeah, five years before this, um, they actually, it was a, a fragrance house that became very popular from the early 2000s. And so Guerlain's Vetiver Extreme is number six. Number five is this. This is Vetiver Extraordinaire. Dominique Ropion made this in 2002. So Frederick Mall's house was launched in 2000. This is one of the earlier releases, not when it first got launched, but a couple years once the house got up and running. And uh, to me, this is a very spicy, peppery experience. They list pink pepper, and uh, but I get black pepper from this, from, from Vetiver uh, Extraordinaire. Shout out to Rachel for sending me this bottle. Very kind of you, Rachel. Um... I sent her some samples. She sent me this and in another bottle, which I'll talk about on the channel one day soon. I love this stuff. I think uh, this almost was higher on the list, but the problem is there's some stiff competition at the top of the list. But so this does have that bitter orange note, which the Vetiver Extreme is missing, and it has more cashmere. Dominic, uh, sorry. Dominique Ropion probably likes Cashmoran too, but Frederick Mall loves Cashmoran. Cashmoran is like one of his favorite notes. Um, he uses it in a lot of his Dante bras, like an overdose of Cashmoran. Probably one of the best Cashmoran fragrances out there. I should get a bottle of that. Uh, I have a review on the channel, I think, of Dante Bra. But this is um, the woods, the way that the woods blend with sort of that pink pepper, black pepper spiciness in this. And then the oak moss and the musk, and it smells so high quality. This smells much higher quality than this is, is the problem. They smell similar, but even though this is a Guerlain, the Frederick Mall to me smells higher quality. That's why this is um, five, and that's why this is number six. But uh, they're both. I mean, if you're just sort of interested in the DNA, I think I got this for like $47 or something for 100 mil, just because it didn't have a cap, which is a steal to me. Um, and I'm thinking this will probably be discontinued soon because I don't, no one buys this. No one talks about it. Um, I think it just sort of gets relegated to the vetiver stepchild, if you will. Um, but both of those, I think, play in the same sandbox. And I think when vetiver extraordinaire came out, Guerlain was taking notes. And so I think they sort of, that's when they did their flanker. But man, I'm really, really loving the, the vetiver lately and i love wearing it this time of year like summer perfect time to wear vetiver all right so that was number six and number five number four is a vetiver that i am head over heels in love with and actually frederick mall still almost left this one as being higher because that's how much i love vetiver extraordinaire and i have a review on the channel of vetiver extraordinaire if you want to check out my true thoughts on it my my full thoughts on it i should have said um, but this is called Etro's Vetiver at number four. And this is maybe one of the most underrated vetiver scents I've ever smelled. Etro's Vetiver is, um, <laughs> I mean, it is unbelievable. But this is a dark, earthy, 
very earthy and dark vetiver, but I love it. I think they hit a home run with this. This is the vintage Eau de Cologne. Uh, Parfumo says even the Eau de Toilette is discontinued. I don't know if that's true or not, but it shows both of them as discontinued. But this is Bergamot, Clary Sage, Petit Grand with sage brush in the top with bourbon vetiver, guyac wood and iris, tobacco flower and amber. And so where in the Ariza El Le Grand, the iris plays a much more prominent role in the Ariza El Le Grand, the iris is still here in the vetiver, but it doesn't tone down the, the dark, deep, earthy soiliness of this. This is a sweaty vetiver is the way that I would describe it. It's a sweaty vetiver. Um, and the clary sage only adds to that. And, and that tobacco, tobacco flower, whatever they want to call it, note in the base, um, just adds to the masculinity. I, I, I wore this to work this week. Absolutely brilliant. Loved every second of it. But it is deep and dark. And it might take some getting used to. But, um, man, Etro's Vetiver is one of the best earthy vetivers on the market at number four. Number three. Number three, this is a fragrance that basically has a cheat code to Channel Ram because uh, it just can't do any wrong to me. It's my favorite flanker ever. I think, I think it's my favorite flanker of all time. Um, and it is the great Bellamy Vetiver. I absolutely adore, am in love with Bellamy. It's probably one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Um, and this is Jean-Claude Elena taking Bellamy and modernizing it and just, you know, making it a little bit more, the vetiver note in here, just, you know, that, um, rough and tumble eighties leather, uh, that smoky, woody, uh, spicy leather that is Bellamy, which is just, a, one of the best leather fragrances of all time, hands down. And yet, Jean-Claude Elena, even though he did smooth, he he um he he made it a little bit smoother. I think he I think this is a spicy leathery Shepra. And it's very complex. Even though if you go look at the note listing, you're just gonna see leather and vetiver. This is an extremely complex fragrance. I think this is one of the I think this is the best flanker ever made. How's that for a view? The man getting ready in the mirror with his riding jacket on. Looks like he's in an old house. That's old money right there. Uh, Bellamy Vetiver is <sighs> so good. Uh, when people ask me, should I buy modern Bellamy? I tell them no. Buy this instead. That's how much I love this. If you're going to buy Bellamy, buy the old stuff. If you're going to buy new Bellamy, just buy this. Buy this. Um, it is so, so good. Uh, and it has the, uh, the dark, deep uh, aspects of the vetiver I love, but it also has that leathery Bellamy heart. Like, Jean-Claude Elena uh, stayed true to the fragrance here. Like, by 2013, he had already developed his style, and it wasn't this. And yet, he decided to create this because it stayed true to what Bellamy was. You know, it really... Uh, he didn't want to create something that was in his light, airy, transparent, watercolor style because that's not Bellamy. Bellamy is actually the exact opposite of that. And he created, I think, a masterpiece. So Bellamy Vetiver. Oh, man. Okay, so that's number three. Number two and number one. You may say this is a cheat, uh, but this is just how I feel, and I needed to do a top 10, so I figured, what the hey, let's do it this way. Number two is Guerlain's Vetiver, Eau de Toilette version. Huh? So, what beat Guerlain's Vetiver? Is there a fragrance, is there a Vetiver fragrance better than Guerlain's Vetiver? Well, it's actually Guerlain's Vetiver. Um, but the Eau de Cologne version, I think this is the best one, the Eau de Cologne. Um, it is, I mean... You can't go wrong, honestly. Either way, Guerlain's Vetiver is this bottle. Uh, and, and before I go any further, I will tell you that my brother across the pond, Rich Mitch, has a brilliant Vetiver comparison video. He did like a year and a half ago or something. Compares the uh, like four or five different stages of Guerlain's Vetiver. He has all these different amazing old bottles of Vetiver. Um, 
And um, this is a fragrance that I like to wear in the summer because I think it really captures that fresh cut grass feeling in the opening with the bergamot, lemon, orange in the top, nutmeg and pepperiness. But there is this workman's quality to this. You know, there's this, um, there's almost like this mechanic quality, like a man who knows what he's doing uh, around the house or handiwork or uh, fixing cars or you know, those kind of things, you know, somebody who is a handyman, someone who works with their hands. There is a little bit of this, um, you know, if it, my, my, uh, old man is, and one of his best friends is sort of a do it all do, you know, knows a little bit about everything kind of guy. And you go into his garage and they always have those soaps that like remove grease, you know, just imagine those kind of, uh, those kind of men. The men who could, you, you could call and say, hey, I've got a problem with my motor and my compressor of my uh, air conditioning unit. And he'd be like, okay, I'll be there in a minute to fix it with you. You know, that kind of guy. There's a workman's quality to Guerlain's vetiver. And that's the kind of men that probably wore this. But there's this flying over a beautiful green pasture feeling to me too. Um, and this bottle, the Eau de Toilette, has that. It also, of course, has the deeper tobacco and the darker, richer aspects of vetiver and all, and the Guerlainade and all this stuff in here, right? This has all of that. However, there is something that is unbelievably... Uh, it almost made my jaw drop when I smelled this for the very first time because the contrast between that clean-cut grass feeling in the top right? That citrusy, summery, this is a fresh vetiver. You know, these are two basically fresh vetivers, but this stays fresh. This stays throughout the entire wear fresh. This goes into this contrast of this much deeper vetiver, darker, and the depth of this fragrance and you know how, you know how you've ever seen like the, um, colors human can see scale and it's like all of the colors all the way from white all the way to black and you have everything like lined up in in little squares the the range of colors the range of smells in this from the fresh opening to the to <laughs> to that smoky tobacco in the dry down it literally had it it literally reminds me of my old man's friend his name's bob who you know, would, would be in his garage working on his car and, you know, washing his hands with the soap that gets the grease out. The only thing this that needed to be added, and Bob was a vegetarian, so he would never do this, but the only thing that needed to be added is to pull out a cigarette after that and, and have a smoke. You know, that completes this scent, is there's this, you know, you just got done with a hard day's work, you sit down, you crack open, um whatever American beer of choice you choose, and you have a, have a, have a smoke, have a cigarette, uh, and just sort of lay, lay back and, and just rest after a long, hard day of work, right? And true work, not just showing up to a job, not just going to an office like, like, you know, like I do every day, but actual work, true manual labor work. There's a feeling of that and there's a relaxation that comes with being done with manual labor that you just don't get when you're just in a job, you know. You're in a job, you go home, okay, you're tired or whatever, but you're not like physically exhausted. And that's the feeling of uh it's a man who worked all day is is just physically exhausted and just this deep unsweetened masculine sharp it's just a perfect masculine scent. I absolutely Adore Guerlain's Vetiver. So that's number one, the Eau de Cologne of Guerlain's Vetiver. Discontinued. You can still buy this, and it's still good from what I hear. The Eau de Toilette of Vetiver is still good. But if you're really into Vetiver, if you can find these at a good price, these older bottles of the Eau de Cologne, they also come in this. Um, the bottle almost looks like, uh, it's hard to describe, it almost looks like uh, Rich Mitch had, go, go watch Mitch, Rich Mitch's video if you're interested in seeing that comparison and seeing the different bottles, um, but but uh, Guerlain's Vetiver's number one, Eau de, Toil Eau de Toilette number two, Eau de Cologne number one. So that's my top ten, Vetiver's with the name Vetiver 
with the name Vetiver in the fragrance name. Uh, so let me know what your favorites are. Do leave comments and all the stuff that uh, I love responding to the comments. I love interacting with you guys. Um, it is a pleasure and an honor to do these. So this weekend we'll do the This Is Not A Top 10 Vetiver where we just focus on a bunch of different fragrances and just, you know, go a little faster but still talk about different fragrances that have the note of vetiver. But for those who want to really focus on vetiver, this will be a reference video, I hope. So cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.